<coughs> Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 508. And the topic today is if he completes you, and that pertains to yesterday's broadcast, I'll get to that in a moment. If he completes you, what happens when you break up? So um, let me think about that for a second whilst I introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women attract and, sorry, excuse me, I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last couple of years almost now, I do these talks on Facebook called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. So, yes, Facebook Live first, then on YouTube, and I'll tell you how to get those links later on. And the topic today, or it's just the episode, is number 508. Um, and the topic today is. If he completes you, what happens when you break up? So yesterday, um, in episode 506, strangely enough, I was talking about this whole thing about, um, well actually I was using, I, 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 sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember the title from yesterday, it just escaped my mind, so it'll come back. But I was talking about the idea of codependence and the trap and putting it in a way that really made sense, at least I hope it did yesterday. So today I want to put the other, let the other shoe drop. Because I mentioned yesterday I was going to talk about this today because I didn't have time, didn't feel as appropriate in that time frame to do it. So this is the part two in a way. So to recap or to give you cliff notes from yesterday, there's a mindset or a way of thinking that's going around in our culture that somehow when we find our person, they'll make us complete, that our lives will be whole and we'll be all, all okay. And until that time, we're not complete. So this paradigm of, well, it's a quote, it's actually quoting Jerry Maguire about you complete me is what, what, what he said, she said, excuse me, in Jerry Maguire, he said, in Jerry Maguire, I remember which you said which. And basically the high paradigm, which sounds so romantic and so incredibly beautiful the way it was said, is absolutely fundamentally codependent. <laughs> because it is stating for the record that without the other person, you're incomplete, which is a lie. It's absolutely false. Just to be clear, none of us are walking around incomplete. No matter what our body shape, sexuality, preference, any of that stuff, we're all complete whole beings. That's a fact of life. I oh, sorry, I had a whole thing about politics going in the middle of that. I'm putting that to the side. That's not part of this conversation. So the paradigm or the belief that we're running that somehow when we're with somebody, they complete us and make us whole may sound romantic, but it's extremely discomfort. Uh, uncomfortable and, and discomfort creating if you break up because suddenly your rules inside that say that without them you're incomplete feels like you've yanked your soul out which is why you might feel heartbroken when somebody breaks up with you I mean it's not uncommon I've been there myself heartbreak is not required but it's generally a part of what happens when relationships end painfully and usually it's heartbreak on the person who is broken up with not the person who broke up with somebody else so when you break up with somebody else, your heart's normally not the one that's broken. You may be wounded, but it won't be broken. The one who's broken up with, usually the one that's, whose heart's broken, just to qualify that. So part of the heartbreak is tied to this somehow belief that our life is no longer complete because they left us. Which I said before is bullshit. Yes, I'm being blunt. So part of our heartbreak is on a fictitious, fantasy-based belief that isn't true. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with the possibility that if we don't carry that belief around anymore, we won't hurt so much when, we broke, when we're broken up with. Now that isn't a bad thing. Because some people look at the point of view that, well, the more I'm, more I'm hurt and wounded from the breakup is because of how much we loved each other. That's a valid point. At the same time, that love, <laughs> let me say it this way, that love didn't go with them. That love's inside of you. This is going to reframe, this is going to be a paradigm shift for some of you. And, and I hope this makes sense to you because this is not what I would call the most um, common language or common understanding, but most people don't really get it. When their love goes away, it isn't their love that goes away. They go away, their love stays with you. One of the challenges of heartbreak, excuse me, one of the problems, one of the challenges of breakup is that we think that when we're broken up with, all the good stuff went with them and doesn't come with us. That's a lie. 
the challenge is, is that we have associations with the good stuff inside of us with the pain of separation. And that is where we can do the work because really what's going on is we have got this, um, I'll say Gordian knot, not quite, but we have this knotted um, intertwining of emotions and thoughts and beliefs, some of which are valid, but a lot of them aren't. And so a heartbreak oftentimes is much more drastic and painful because we make up assumptions about the way life is and it's not true. Let me give you some keys to maybe undo that, if you're, especially if you're going through this now, or you've been through a recent breakup and you feel this wounding inside. One thing I'll make very clear, you're not as bad off as you think you are. That's good news, by the way. Secondly, the love that you have felt or left with that person didn't, it's with you, which means that that grief that you feel is a, is a disassociation of your feelings that somehow your loving went away, but it's not. Here's the thing. <laughs> And it sounds heret um, it sounds, like, it sounds um, heretical. No, it sounds like you're being a heretic. Heresy. That's the word. Heresy. It's look, it sounds like heresy. I couldn't get the right word in my mind for a second there. That somehow, when you have a breakup, you should be okay. Right? The rule book is when you feel heartbroken, and when you've had been broken up with, you should feel really bad because the rules. You shouldn't be happy, joyful, happy, um, at peace, loving, or any of that stuff because you must grieve for a certain amount of time. It's almost like the rules of society. You cannot be um, happy after someone breaks up with you, because somehow that's wrong. Frankly, sometimes when someone breaks up with you, it's the happiest day of your life, really. But you can't say that out loud, you have to keep it quiet. So this pretense of being more grief-stricken is pointless, really, because it's a rule book that isn't true. So let me give you a couple of keys again. The love inside of you that didn't go away when they left is a resource you have available that you can actually love yourself more. When they leave is a good time to refill your tanks from yourself because you may have done, you may, during the time being together with that person, you may have done the most, um, the cardinal sin is giving them access to all of your resource tanks, as it were. They fill up your loving by loving you, which means you put, a, you put your stuff on in reserve sort of thing, in the freezer, so they could love you fully and you could immerse in the love, which is great. And then when they leave, you feel devastated and desolate because the loving went away. The thing is, the love is still inside those freezer tanks that you've got, you know, those, those, um, sorry, I've got some bad images going through my head on this one. My analogies don't always make sense, so trust me on this, but the reality is the love that you have inside is always there. It may be put on the, put on the back burner or put in the freezer, hot and cold, you know, whatever. But the truth is that you can bring it forward any time. So this feeling you may have of being wounded, heartbroken, devastated is only because somehow you feel guilty about what happened. Yes, I use the word guilty. You may feel resentful too because they broke up with you because something happened. It may be because they cheated on you, whatever that was. And you can feel righteously indignate, righteous indignation and upset about what they did. But the truth, the real truth is, you have power to reset the barometer, so to speak. You can raise your own vibration. You love yourself. And you can actually be at peace. The temptation is to feel wounded, to feel hurt, because somehow it makes them feel bad. It doesn't. They left. They're out of the picture. Your job when you're alone again is to take care of you. Simple, pure effort. Take care of yourself. So loving yourself is the first step, the fundamental step you can do at any time to remember who you are. The trap we fall into is that somehow the relationship ended and therefore we're less than who we are supposed to be. Sorry, we're less than who we are, which is not true. We think we are. And it's their fault. So we have to blame them and feel in a place of Re upset, revenge, woundedness, hurt feelings, all this crap. And it is crap. A couple of quick analogies. Um, resentment, th these, are, these are metaphors I've used before and I've, I've heard them many times, so you can use them as you wish. Uh, they're not mine, I borrowed them. Resentment is taking poison, expecting the other person to die. They leave you, you resent them, you're getting toxic in your own system because you feel like somehow they did it to you. It doesn't affect them, it affects you. So stop doing it. You need to take care of yourself. Second one. There's a, another one. There's another switch places once in a while. But the other one is about um, anger is like hold, is, is holding a burning rock in your hand about to throw it at the other person. In moments burning you before you can get to them. If you get the point from these two analogies, it's very simple. The pain that's happening is inside of you, not them. So having resentment or anger against the other person doesn't do anything for them at all. All it does is wound you. 
So those two take to heart. Absolutely, they will hurt you. Not them, anger and resentment will hurt you. And the sooner you get this clear, and the sooner you start to learn to love yourself again, the sooner you can be at peace, you can be self-loving, self-loving, and be free to love again. It isn't about the other person. It never is, it never was. Bursting your bubble, I know. But relationship is additive of two people together. They add to who you already are. They don't replace something that's missing. So this, was, this was on yesterday's talk, by the way. I invite you to watch that one because there was a whole conversation about the codependent model in a very, um, <laughs> a very deliberate way I was talking about. So this is like a PS for that, which is when you're single again after being in a relationship. When you're single again after a breakup, yes, you can feel wounded. It's okay. It's human experience to feel that way. But don't bask in it. Don't immerse yourself for years in it and do not spend your time re resenting or lamenting the other person. That's their stuff, not yours. Take care of yourself, love yourself, and focus on taking care of who you are. That foundation will rebuild your circuits, as it were. It will rebuild your um, support structures and it will put you back in a place of loving. This is fundamental stuff I know, but in some ways people don't even know this. So this, I'm keeping this short so you can think about this and process it. Maybe you want to listen to it twice, three times, it will sink in. Loving yourself is the key to all of this. Yes, I'll tell you about my self-love practice in a minute. I'll talk about it in all my broadcasts, you know, and get to, get to that. But I'll make sure you get this point. After a breakup, you didn't go from being complete to being complete. You never were incomplete. So after a breakup, you just simply have more time on your hands. <laughs> True. And nobody to hang out with right that moment. This is why it's tempting to get back in another relationship again, either with the same person or somebody else. And that rebound is a bad choice. I've, as I've written about that in my book, I talked about it on these broadcasts before as well. Do not be tempted to do that. It will not help you or the other person. This is the time to focus on you. Self-love, self-support, self-care, and selfishness at that time to really take care of who you are. That's the best advice I can give you. It's the wisest advice you can take to heart and change your life. I think I made my point clear enough. So the self-love thing I mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do talk about this quite often because I create it for my clients. It's a guided meditation self-love practice, which you can have if you go to my website and check it out. I'll give those links in a moment. Um, but if you're dealing with this, I understand it can hurt because we put our eggs in this basket that somebody else jumped on. It hurts. But know that you don't have to stay there. Know that you have the choice to love yourself and to get, start basically healing your own wounds. And one of those ways of doing that, whether you're single or you just had a breakup in between those two, is my self-love practice. Rather than explain it here, just go to my website, which is barryselby.com, that's my name, and click, and click on the self-love practice or just simply go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love and check it out. If it lines up for you, just start with it. It's two guided meditations and a written book that will guide you through the whole process. Um, if you are going to break up and you want some counsel and some guidance, I do offer that as well. Let's have a talk about that before we sign up for anything. Go to barryselby.com forward slash chat and sign up for a conversation. Get on my calendar and we can talk. I'll make this point clear again. If you think he completed you or she completed you if you're a man or gay, straight, whichever it is for you, think again. You are complete already. If you want a recap of that, watch yesterday's broadcast, number 506. This will make some sense too, I trust. I appreciate you watching. And again, I'll put the links in the comments afterwards so you can check them out as well. And oh, this is a Facebook Live in case you didn't get that at the beginning. Um, so on my, this will be reposted to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. And also find it on my YouTube channel. I upload these up to YouTube as well. So you can go to my YouTube channel, which is, by the way, all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You find all 500 and, well, include this one, 507, and 508, excuse me. And then eventually it ends up on my podcast. So there's an audio version of this as well showing up eventually, which is on iTunes. You go to Messages for the Masculine um, podcast and you subscribe there. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And you can download the podcast if you wish. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond in the comments afterwards. And uh, with that, I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, same channel. Take care. Bye.